Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. My name's Nathan Simmons, and if I said I was a podcaster, you would agree. And I am Dustin, and one night, I'm going to come to you inside of your house, (laughs) wherever you are sleeping, and I'm going to slit your throat. (laughs) And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, and of all the podcasts and all the towns and all the world, (laughs) you walked into ours. There's there's an ocean of bad endings beneath your feet. (laughs) And I think I might have even quoted the wrong movie. You did. You you quoted quoted Casablanca. I sure did. I sure did. Get out out of here ghost <laughs> uh welcome nathan hey man this is one of those movies that like i can't believe like you know how like hipsters love to like create a personality around a character or, th- or like a, a thing mm-hmm. how is this not like there weren't wasn't just like plain viewing didn't become a thing <laughs> after this. How, how are we not uh all doing uh daniel plain view impressions all the time it, like how in the world was that not just everything right <laughs> mm-hmm it's truly like not only just the voice, which is already incredible, yeah. but just the the physicality oh, and yeah. his his movement. It's very ape like. I want to walk like this guy, uh-huh. like not without the injury. Like I want to be able to just like you've got sciatica. Yeah, like, <laughs> right. It seems to which be. I do. Um, <laughs> no, but it, it's it's so funny because I was watching this movie, thinking I thought multiple times, "Holy shit, no one's ever looked cooler than mm-hmm. Daniel Day Lewis in this movie." Oh my god! And then also multiple times realizing. Well, that's like most scene kids now. Yeah, like that's like that's like like when 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 Mumford and Sons took off. Oh and, yeah, and <laughs> it's like let's have big burly mustaches. Let's yeah. have torn cardigans and uh, big Fleet Foxes energy. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Dirty uh, church shoes. Yeah, uh-huh. absolutely. Smearing oil on my face. Hmm. Uh, I mean, yeah. This this is what most. Uh, most people in, in LA look like, honestly, if you're just walking <laughs> up and down the streets, this is what it looks like. Sure. But yeah, welcome everybody. This is, of course, the Silver Linings Playlist. Of uh, if you're a new listener, thank you for tuning in. We've got uh, a huge show lined up for you here today. We're uh-huh. going to be talking There Will Be Blood. And at the end of it, as we do with all our episodes, we're going to try and find the silver lining to the ending of There Will Be Blood, which, if you don't recall, uh, <laughs> ends abruptly. Yeah. And also ends uh, abusively. Terrifyingly. And uh, another A word ends uh, alcohol. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely what a movie to start off the new year absolutely and and if like you said there's just an ocean of bad lining still to come for this season <laughs> of the show so uh but yeah unfortunately uh, our other co-host mally couldn't make it mm-hmm. uh he's off starting his own uh welling business building derricks <laughs> yeah, he took that finder's fee and split he ran i haven't seen him since and uh his twin brother didn't want to be on the show either so <laughs> <laughs> we gotta talk about that like yeah. we gotta talk about the twins of it all uh-huh oh i got questions about paul sunday uh, don't even worry about uh-huh. it uh-huh but yeah so this is there will be blood it's uh last as of last week this movie is now 15 years old can you believe it wow that's crazy mm-hmm. and yeah it's it's truly one of the greats like yeah. on this rewatch i'm like yeah i can st- still see it it it's aged perfectly like this movie is timeless even it is. though it's in a time capsule yeah. like it's uh, and I, w- I would say it's also one of those movies that you have to like it's not one that i'm like oh i want to throw this on every year but yeah. like whenever i do I'm, I'm like okay i'm in it i'm here mm-hmm. i'm with these characters i'm living with them for a little while yeah but yeah it is it's not it's not one of those like oh man you know what i would love to just <laughs> get yeah. out at the party this yeah. week from the moment one when johnny greenwood's score kicks in Ooh. it's Oof, it's it's a good one. I think I think Roger Ebert described this as relentless, or like as some there was some film critic who described the movie as like just feeling claustrophobic mm-hmm. and relentless, mm-hmm. and I think that's the best description for this because it really just feels like God. This is this is just going from bad to worse for years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for, for it's claustrophobic, but somehow it's in the desert, uh-huh. which is it's interesting. Yeah, and we should say we've been kind of holding back a little bit. Not only is this episode there will be blood, but there will be milkshakes because. They they are, and there are, yes. I, I'm going to go ahead and jump to Drink of the Film, which I think is, understandably, milkshakes. <laughs> yeah. And we went out and each got our own milkshake, yeah. and I've been salivating because I haven't even tasted this yet. Oh, but I'm, su- I'm sipping mine on mic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's a good idea. All right, hold on. Let me see if I can. It's thick. 
Boy, is she thick. Yeah, I just realized you can't really make a slurping sound with a milkshake until it's at the bottom. Of the- <laughs> so you're doing it. How are you doing? You must have been drinking yours. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been working on it. Oh, I got okay. a really big milkshake, uh, chocolate and uh, vanilla Ooh. custard milkshake. So good. Oh, where'd you go? Uh, Freddy's okay. frozen custard and steak boigas. Gotcha. See, I went to Culver's and also got a oh, custard. Culver's is so good. I got with an unconventional choice, but it's one of my favorite kind of milkshakes. I got a peanut butter milkshake. Mm. Love a peanut butter milkshake, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I would have sprung for a Five Guys peanut butter milkshake, which is my favorite, mm. but uh, A, I'd like to prevent diabetes as much as possible, and uh-huh. B, I can't justify spending like 7 or $8 on a milkshake. No, absolutely not. That's, that's my <laughs> whole beef with Five Guys, is I, I love everything on their menu, and I'm just like, am I putting $12 down for a single patty burger? Mm-hmm. Like, what and do I have to take a loan out? <laughs> if you get that in a Corona, you're you're bankrupt. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's why I gotta go to the bodega and get a tuna. <laughs> I'll turn on white. <laughs> so there will be blood. Uh, this is, I think, probably my third time seeing it. Mm-hmm. This was around the time when this movie came out, 2007, if I'm not mistaken. This was around the time I really started to get into prestigious movies. Yeah. Because this was also the year, if you don't remember, No Country for Old Men yeah. came out. These two head to head at the Oscars. Mm-hmm. And I listened, one of my favorite podcasts I listen to, mm-hmm. they cover movies and they talked about this movie in comparison to No Country for Old Men. Uh-huh. And I think they kind of nailed it. No Country for Old Men is more entertaining. Yes. On like a broad spectrum, but this has more to say. I think that's I think that's totally hitting the nail on the head. Yeah. And I find them both entertaining. I find them both engaging. But as much as I love No Country for Old Men, it's like I truly love that movie. I do think this movie is better. Yeah. Like it's I don't know. I I, I understand, I'm okay with No Country for All Men winning the, the Best Picture Oscar, uh-huh. but man, this one is, I don't know, something about like how small it feels, yeah. and somehow it's, it feels so big. I don't know. No, absolutely. I mean, it feels, I mean, every everybody's concerns are sort of, they're global concerns, but it's all about how it affects them directly. Mm-hmm. So it, it always keeps coming back to character, even when we're watching this giant tower of flames Mm -hmm. it's more about how is this going to affect daniel and hw and Mm -hmm. his bottom line Mm -hmm. and that's exactly what daniel's thinking about too how is this going to affect me how can you be upset that (laughs) line that line kind of blew me away you'd be so miserable or something like that yeah yeah what does he say yeah something like that how could could you look so miserable i wrote it down it's uh what are you looking so miserable about there's a whole ocean of oil beneath our feet so good yeah so good and you can't not do a voice no (laughs) it's such a good voice yeah. It's, I mean, it, it's, it's jazz, baby. <laughs> it's been said to death, but Daniel Day Lewis truly is one of the few actors that really disappears into yes. the role. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure you've listened to that episode of I Was There Too with Paul F. Tompkins, mm-hmm. but like he talks about how he heard when they were shooting the movie, he heard DDL's actual voice and accent one time mm-hmm. because he's like, he's like, he doesn't stay in character the whole time. He's not like, you know, being ridiculous or whatever, but he does want to like lock into the voice because it's so specific. Yeah. So he would like kind of he would do the limp around and he would also have the voice all the time. But yeah, he he fully he's a chameleon. Like mm-hmm. as much as I as much as that's like an overused term, like Daniel Day Lewis always disappears into his parts. Yep. And it's it's interesting because like there's the comparison of like, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio is the brando of this generation, like this batch of filmmakers. But I can kind of see that. There is no comparison to Daniel Day Lewis. Like Ooh. he is his own island. Yes. Like he is on his own island of performances, and I, this is probably the best one. It's definitely up there. Yeah. How do you feel about Phantom Thread being his last film? You know, I, I, I really liked Phantom Thread, okay. but my my biggest problem with Phantom Thread was I was just sort of like this seems kind of uh, innocuous mm-hmm. to be your retirement film. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it's just sort of like. Okay, yeah, I, uh, I guess I spend a couple of days with this guy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If that makes any sense. It, it does. And I, I'm lukewarm on Phantom Thread. Yeah. I recognize it's a good movie, but it's just, uh, I don't know. It didn't shake me. It yeah. really grabbed me by the shoulders and shake me. Like some of, you know, especially his PTA, you know, work. Yeah. And then I, I think he's incredible in Lincoln. I mean, he's never given a he's never given a bad performance. Mm-mm. No, I, I think this is his, this would be the one I would say, if you're going to retire, retire with this one. Because this sure. one is just... God damn, it's it's a tour de force. Like, yeah. I mean, there's a reason this is on IMDb's top 250. Mm-hmm. I think it's number 140 last I looked. Which even that's too high, I think. Or like that's are too low. Rather. Yeah, I was gonna say I feel I think it's still too low. Yeah. But, um, 
Yeah. Uh, do you see this in theaters or no? I did not. I no, I, I missed. I missed this one. I was. Uh, I was not seeing a whole lot of movies at this time. Uh, yeah. Like in theaters, I was mostly waiting for the DVD and stuff like that. I can't remember. Ex- oh, because I was in college, so I was broke. So mm-hmm. that, was, that was a big part of it. Yeah, I was. I was just graduating high school, uh-huh. so yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't uh, flush with cash either. Uh-huh. But no, this one I remember seeing right around the time of Snow Country and just being blown away by both of them. So totally. All right. Well, without further ado, let's start talking about the production. I, I'm, my throat's getting thick from this milkshake. Let's start yeah, talking about. I, I, yeah. I'm realizing this was a bad idea. Like, yeah, no, I, I literally. <laughs> I'm. I like. I. I have had singing lessons and like went to school for acting, and I'm still just like I should eat a bunch of dairy and uh-huh. then get in front of a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> so for the next whole hour and a half, I'm gonna be like struggling here. Yeah, we're doing two episodes today oh yeah that's we should tell but yeah yeah so for for people in the future when you're hearing this we're, we have to double up because of the holidays so it's an interesting back-to-back we're doing and yeah milkshakes was probably not the good choice to start with not but here all. we go <laughs> i wish we had it oh good clue so yeah, like we mentioned, the year is 2007. The director is, of course, the great Paul Thomas Anderson. Woo. The movie stars Daniel Day-Lewis, Paul Dano, Kevin J. O'Connor, Sierra Hins, Dylan Frazier, Sidney McAllister, David Willis, David Wachowski, Colton Woodward, Sunday, Colleen Foy, and Russell Harvard. Wow, all of them listed on RogerEbert.com? Absolutely, wow. not mentioned, okay. but what is a travesty that he's not mentioned? Paul F. Tompkins. Yeah, it's Mr. Prescott. Mm-hmm. The budget was $25 million. It managed to grow $76 million worldwide. Currently at a 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. Nice. Winner for Best Leading Actor for Mr. Daniel Day-Lewis. Mm-hmm. Best Cinematography for Robert Elswit. Well earned. Well deserved. Yep. Uh, nominated for Best Picture, as we mentioned, of course, Lost in No Country for Old Men. Uh, nominated for Best Directing for Paul Thomas Anderson. Uh-huh. Best Adapted Screenplay for Paul Thomas Anderson. Best Editing. Best Art Direction. Best Sound Editing. And as I mentioned, it is currently number 140 on IMDb's Top 250 Movies of All Time. Nice. Yeah, man, this is this is a classic. So yeah, not not nominated for an Oscar. Johnny Greenwood score, which was criminal, criminal. That's not nominated. But yeah, it was it was disqualified because they they said like, oh well, not all of it was written specifically for this movie. Yeah, because uh, like some of it was like reworked Radiohead demos and stuff like that. But a year later, they award once best original song for a song that was written three years before the movie was shot. So, so dumb. The Academy just doesn't like keep. I mean, that's a great song, but it's just like, come on, be consistent. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, before we actually talk about the movie proper, why don't we revisit the trailer? A trailer I have not seen since probably the movie came out. So yeah. I'm excited to see how they market this very slow movie. Yeah, I was wondering about that as well. All right, well, here, we'll find out right now. <laughs> this is the second time I've seen the movie, period. Just, so I've traveled over half our state to be here tonight. Well, we start with Gary the first line of dialogue. <laughs> well was coming in at Coyote Hills, and I had to see about it. Ladies and gentlemen, if I say I'm an oil man, you will agree. I'm a family man. Uh, I run a family business. This is my son and my partner, H.W. Plainview. You boys are a regular family business. Now, you have a great chance here. My son is a healer and a vessel for the Holy Spirit. He has a church. And you will be cast up and the rest back to perdition. I'm fixed. <laughs> no other company in this field. A string of tools very talky trailer work. yeah it is That's why well I'm yeah i mean it's not like they can't cut to a knife fight yeah <laughs> I, I think it'd be good to do like a vibes trailer like oh sure that makes sense put the johnny green one score under it to show to show the Derek on fire mm-hmm. him cuddling hw when he's deaf I remember seeing that shot, him staring at the burning tower, yeah. like, and just thinking, well, I gotta see whatever that movie is. Yep. Also, he's gonna keep smacking around that kid from Ruby Sparks. <laughs> Smack around that kid from the girl next door. Don't bully me, Daniel, please. Don't bully me, Daniel, please, is a lie to the trailer. It's one of my favorite lines. I have a competition in me. I want no one else to succeed. What a line. Uh-huh. Oh, there you go. This is the part I was talking about. Yeah, just vibes. Yeah. (laughs) I can't keep doing this on my own. Oof. With these, um... People. (laughs) Uh (laughs) Ugh. 
Okay, yeah, I took it back. Take it back. I love that. Yeah. That's a hell of a long static shot. Like, let's show you that this is the best performance you'll ever see this year. Uh huh. Based on oil. Oil. Yeah, I take it back. Great trailer. Fantastic. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, we'll get to Paul Dano. I have so many oh my God. questions and controversial thoughts. So, so we should discuss it right away. So, for those who don't know, Paul Dano is playing twin brothers in the movie. Sure. It was originally supposed to be that one kid. What's his name? Uh, I can't remember what movie he was in. It was it was a kid who was supposed to play Paul Sunday. Oh yeah, the actor. I can't remember the actor's name, mm-hmm. but he backed out at the last minute. I think he had other prior commitments or something. Uh, PTA was like, "Well, fuck it. Let's just make the Sunday Brothers twin brothers." Right. So Paul Dano is playing dual roles here. Paul Dano had four days to prepare like to play yeah. Eli Sunday. Wild. That's ins- and knocks it out of the park. Mm-hmm. It's so like. It is interesting to see one of our greatest character actors, Paul Dano, yeah. going up against one of our just genuine, just leading man actors, Daniel Day-Lewis, and keeping his own. Right. Like, keeping up. It's, it's crazy. The, the original uh, the original Eli Sunday was Kel O'Neill, mm. uh, who's gone on to become a, a filmmaker. Gotcha. Okay, so the way this movie kicks off is right out the gate, it's fucking great. Yeah. It's... Just a fade up from black to a wide view of some mountains and this ominous dissident score. Like yes. it's a lot of the score reminded me of like The Shining. Sure. Like it's got very dissident kind of like violin string plucks and everything. And it's, I was really feeling a lot of Hans Zimmer, like yep. The Dark Knight and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. It immediately tells you, hey, some shit's going to go down in this movie yeah. like, right away. Uh, you're never going to be allowed to feel at ease. Mm-hmm. Uh, like that is the that is the purpose of a drone score. And I love it. Mm-hmm. It's it's right out the gate. You're not going to be comfortable this whole movie. Right. And the, just the wide views of the landscape and everything. It felt like some 2001 shit about to happen too. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a great way to kick off the movie. There is no flo- like this movie is for being two and a half hours. There's no fat no really on it. It's lean. It's a very lean movie. No, it, it, and even when no, quote unquote nothing is happening, you're seeing the the change of this character. I mm-hmm. mean, when the movie starts, there is a lightness to Daniel. He's have he has a smile on his face mm-hmm. while he's just drinking coffee and listening to the storm gathering. He's even calm and methodical after he lights dynamite and just slowly climbs out of the hole. Uh-huh. Like, he's he's not in a hurry. He's not ill at ease. Mm-hmm. And every time we cut back to him over the course of the movie for these long static shots, we feel a, we see a little bit of him slip away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he starts off like this guy is like wearing very old long johns. He's out by himself in the middle of nowhere. Uh-huh. He's mining for silver at the bottom of this this uh, this pit here. It's mm-hmm. and this fall. Oh my gosh! It's it's like a death sentence, damn near. Like yeah. it, it, in this time period, without proper medicine and quick acting, you'd be dead. Yeah, like that's how dangerous this shit is. But like that, are we to believe he? scuttles back to town on just his back i think it's hilarious that if that's the implication because like it sure seems like it yeah like how far out he's gotta be like a couple miles right could you imagine just well we we get that (laughs) shot of the of the mountain range Mm -hmm. and just sort of the score just goes like Uh like like it's like it sucks it's like the sun going down like that's what it feels like no i just think it's so funny like that's and this tells you everything you need to know about this guy right like this opening scene with barely any dialogue and he's on his back yeah like his feet kicked up as someone else is doing the real work of like with the unbelievable penmanship mm -hmm. oh my god scoring uh, scoring the gold so good the no the only line for the first 14 and a half minutes of this movie is when he wakes up at the bottom of the tunnel Mm -hmm. and goes no Yep. So yep. from the beginning, this guy fucking won't say die. Yeah, he won't accept <laughs> death. And yeah, just I, I don't know something about the image this time of him lying on his back because he hurt himself. But what? Well, I mean, someone else in the back is like counting the money for him. Yeah. Like it kind of tells you all you need to know about this guy. Like he's gonna just get everyone else to do it for him, but he's still gonna be in charge. Yeah. Like he's still gonna be a take charge guy. And he likes to talk about being in the shit, mm-hmm. but he's more than happy to like step aside if yeah. it means. <laughs> Like, he's in danger, yeah. It's certainly, like, I I get this movie is trying to tell you about the the woes of greed and capitalism. 
sure how nasty like fossil fuel is and everything but like this guy is kind of a different archetype because like he he was down in the shits doing it he's not a trust fund kid he's not generational wealth like yeah he he did start his own business i mm -hmm. mean whenever the explosion happens even he's running into the fray to like try to switch it off and everything it's a it's it's interesting to see when that stops yeah it's it's much more of a broad version of this type of character than uh-huh. a mustache twirling villain like yeah he's he's not mr potter from it's a wonderful life exactly like, <laughs> yeah and, and he he literally pulled himself up from the bootstraps like, yeah and then and then became the monster he always was <laughs> yes i was gonna say i feel like this would be the misconstrued like people would see this movie in the wrong like like certain people being like oh see, you see the first half of this is aspirational exactly yeah exactly yeah. i could definitely see this being a misinterpreted kind of moral of the story yeah Oh, and speaking of, you know, you were talking about The Shining, the shot of him, you know, pressing his hand against the drill bit and throwing his hand up is Kubrickian. That's like so good. It's an unbelievable shot. And then the baby is left behind while all the men harvest the oil, which Uh is like we're laying so much symbolism in just these first few minutes of the movie. So good. Man, this mustache he's rocking is (laughs) one of the greats. It looks so good on him. It It looks so good. And yeah, it's almost no dialogue. Another Kubrickian kind of thing, having no dialogue for like the first chunk of your movie. Yeah. And that, yeah, like the hand with the oil up in the sky looks uh, kind of like, it's kind of like the, the ape throwing the bone. Like the it, 2001 shot. Yeah. Or the Barbie trailer. Or the Barbie trailer as, a, <laughs> as it's net for hence will be known. As. Uh, yeah, the Barbie trailer shot. We all know about it. We're teaching it in schools. It's it's incredible. It's one of the best teaser trailers I've seen in a long it time. It really is. It really is. I, I'm so hyped. Um, yeah, no, 14 minutes in, we get the first line of dialogue and it's still narration Mm -hmm. it's it's him addressing the group i'm a family man Mm -hmm. you know which he is is so important to him throughout this absolutely but we got to talk about this guy getting obliterated with this wooden beam holy shit it's funny because this happens twice in the movie Uh and (laughs) both times Oof. Both times I went, oh, yeah, <laughs> like out loud. It's funny because the title would the title of the movie is almost misleading. It's like it's like it's a promise, uh-huh. and it's a promise that delivers, but it's not a spectacle. Like right. when the guy gets hit with the beam, there is a blood spurt, but it is so quickly drowned out by the blackness of the oil. Yes, yeah, and like Eli, when he gets beat later on to death, his blood is almost black on the floor. Yeah. Like it's it's an interesting title, and I remember seeing this movie, and this is again before I understood who PTA was. I understood I didn't really understand prestigious movies at the time because i was a dumb teenage kid but being like <laughs> they're making a movie based off that saw two tagline what oh the my fuck gosh are, what, are they doing? <laughs> what are they doing yeah it's a great title it's a great title so it's, this is the best movie based off a saw two tagline for sure absolutely i think that goes without saying at this point I, I'm, I'm trying to think of what another could be but I uh, pta's next movie is the night he came home there you go there you go but yeah so we he he adopts this baby hw hw which what do you think hw stands for homie wow <laughs> homie wow has women because he gets <laughs> married at the end of the movie <laughs> yeah there you go i do love there's so many this is something i love in these old like these movies period pieces where everyone just goes by their initials mm-hmm. we have an hw later in the movie we meet hm tilford and jj carter mm-hmm. and it's just like and that's just like that's your professional name yeah. is jj carter mm-hmm. it sounds good it rolls off the tongue it's good it's because they don't have time they gotta we gotta speed through it so we gotta well, we gotta through. give we gotta give uh daniel day lewis as many like staccato like syllables mm-hmm. and consonants as possible mm-hmm. jj carter like mm-hmm. it's just it's meant to be said in that voice absolutely it's meant to, it's meant to sound rich right yeah that's that's the whole point and mr. then mr bandy mr bandy and his sows <laughs> this kid that's playing young hw his only acting role that's crazy yeah and uh apparently i think they went to some pta went to some school and was like uh, of, of all the kids you've got here, who do you think would be a good like fit for this role? And I think the principal picked this kid. If wow, it, that's, that's my understanding of the story. I could be have some facts about that wrong, but yeah, yeah, it, this kid's great. Yeah, I, I, it's a shame he didn't go on to do more. It's a very like quiet. I mean, nor- he he has like maybe three lines of dialogue in the movie, mm-hmm. but you you get a lot from his face and and, and his like sort of withholding mm-hmm. uh, attitude. And uh, I remember didn't Daniel Z. Lewis like thanked him on stage for it when. He picked up his Academy Award. And oh, I, I think he said, right. uh, here, let me find the quote. I wish my son and my partner, H.W. Plainview, were up here with me, the mighty Dylan Frazier. Aw. Which 
so oh so great yeah what a class act yeah no but i feel like if this if this kid said he didn't enjoy the filmmaking process and this was your first movie i could totally see you're out in the mud absolutely i was a pta is <laughs> yeah. you're right next to daniel day lewis who's losing his fucking mind all the time so. d- d- sweaty daniel day lewis is cuddling me <laughs> <laughs> we're covered in oil i have to do the mop mop thing yeah. so <laughs> i gotta set benny from the mummy on fire <laughs> oh my okay so <laughs> i completely forgot that who that actor was i totally forgot kevin o'connor was it and i uh-huh. love him and i forgot he was in this movie oh he's great he is great in this movie he's great in the mummy uh-huh. and i kept the whole time i was like i recognize this guy from somewhere i where, sure sure where do i recognize him from and i pulled up his imdb and almost had a stroke i was like oh my god <laughs> this is the Isn't same it, guy it's, it's so wild that he's a favorite of pta and steven Saw. Uh-huh. Like these two <laughs> diametrically opposed filmmakers uh-huh. love to cast him in their movies. He's and he's great in both movies. He's so. great in the master. Mm-hmm. And he's in that for like two seconds. Oh, so good. So Daniel Plainview adopts HW, this kid. Yeah. Tells him that, well, tells him that he's his son. And the whole reason he's using he's keeping this kid around is because he wants to appear to be a family man, a family run business. That's yeah. the whole thing. He says, this is my son and partner HW. Yes. And yeah, I, I like that. That's where we're coming from because yes, he's doing an altruistic thing of saving this baby, but for his own ill gotten gains. Exactly. He's still opportunistic. I mean, mm-hmm. it'd be one thing if he was just saying, this is my boy, but he's taking the extra steps of lying and saying his mother died in childbirth. Uh-huh. I'm the only one he has. Or just straight up saying, I don't want to talk about it. Uh-huh. Like that's what, he says that to Henry later. Oh sure, yeah. I don't don't ask me about these things. Yep. I I love I love the like they don't let him off easy because there are moments in this movie where it's n- not in question at all that he loves this kid. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, he's still using him, and it's part of it's part of this long game. I mean, he he lies at every opportunity to make people like him and trust him more. Mm-hmm. I enjoy all faiths. I don't belong to one church, which is such a Trump. I mean, I, was I, know, we, we, say. I know we mentioned this a bunch <laughs> this season, but that's such a Trumpian thing to say. It is. My favorite book is the Bible. What's your favorite Bible verse? All of them. Yeah. <laughs> I know all the best words. So terrible. But it, but it is very broad, right? Because yes. like, it's not mustache twirling. It's no. not, I only use this kid. Or at the end, like he comes to realize that he loves the kid. It's kind of the opposite. Yeah. Like, he starts off like actually liking this kid, but recognizing that his worth. And as the movie goes along, losing less and less, I don't want to say love for the kid, right. but like losing his uh, his affection for the kid. It, well, and he totally begins to value the work more than the kid. Because mm-hmm. the second that HW is is deafened, he's not only, not only does he feel like, well, I, I don't have the resources or the time to take care of him, but also it, it, there's an implication that he would just... He looks. He makes him look bad. He makes yep. the out the outfit look bad if he's like a, a dad who can't communicate with his son. Ugh. And now all of a sudden he's got a replacement. It's heartbreaking when yeah. that kid loses his his hearing. Ugh. Ugh. But yeah, this is uh, Paul Dano get, gets introduced here as Paul Sun as uh, Paul Sunday. And uh-huh. man, what a come up! Because two years before this, or I'm sorry, three years before this, yeah, he's got the 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 girl next door. Oh sure. And then. Two years after that, he does Little Miss, Miss Sunshine, and then one year later, he does this. Wow. So, like, what a come up. For, yeah. <laughs> for this he was guy. also in, um, he was in Fast Food Nation, which yep. is, uh, I think, the same screenwriter, right? Like, he might or, be right. co screenwriter. Yeah. But yeah, I love Paul Dano. So good. I, I think he's one of those actors that somehow knows exactly how to go super big without losing me. And yeah. I don't know how he does it. Mm hmm. And, like, I just watched him in The Fableman. Yeah. Like, knows how to do a very... Resu- like, he's... Uh, he also just did uh, Hot Ones, and I watched a little bit of that. Uh-huh. He is genuinely... He seems like genuinely the nicest and most right. self-aware person ever. Yeah. Like, I mean, he, what a stellar year for the guy, too. He did The Riddler and was incredible. Yeah. And, like... He's quietly like one of the best actors working today. He's also got a a, a Riddler comic book coming out mm-hmm. that he's written uh, mm-hmm. for DC Comics, and it's really, really good. So mm-hmm. I'm just like, God bless you. Like, mm-hmm. keep doing your thing, man. Yeah, I, I I hope you continue to just make the the smartest of choices in everything you do. Uh-huh. <laughs> he's so good in Love and Mercy as Brian mm-hmm. Wilson. Like, mm-hmm. I just, yeah, everything the guy is in, I'm, I'm interested. Absolutely. He is probably the best part of the Fableman. So I still haven't seen that yet. I, 
I, well, I thought besides the ending, I'll okay. tell you that okay. besides the ending where a uh, certain someone is in the movie for all of three minutes, it's it, he's the best part. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so the hospitality is out of control. Oh my god, I'm sorry we don't have any bread. Uh, so, so we should say okay. Paul Sunday comes to to Daniel Plainview, who's kind of established himself as an oil man. Uh-huh. He says, "I've got there's oil definitely in our town." You give me this a little bit of money for a finder's fee, and then you know you can have at it. He goes to the house and he lies and says they're under there. Him and HW under the pretense of we're hunting quail. Yeah, my boy's been sick. He needs fresh air. Mm-hmm. And so he literally just walks onto this guy's property. Uh huh. The guy says, "Can I help you?" Yes. Different we're- time, man. <laughs> uh huh. He just says, "Yeah, we're hunting. Can I set up a tent in your yard and you bring me some potatoes and milk?" And I'm like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. No. <laughs> yes, and Mr. Sunday, Abel, is so like, oh, man, I'm so I'm sorry. I'll suck your dick yeah. if that helps. Like, he is so, he's so trying to make this good for him. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Like, could you imagine, like, you're at home, and then you happen to notice someone in your front yard walking to your front door. Yeah. You open the front door, and they just walk in. They're like, hey, do you mind if I, like, set up camp over here in your living room? Yeah. Can I take a shit? And also, I can really use some water. Yeah, farts, rubs his ass on your carpet. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's turbo time. It's, it's insane. Like, no, absolutely. I don't know. Different time. And the fact that at this time, he could probably just put a bullet in this guy's head, bury him, and then just of course. assume his identity. <laughs> which he, which which happens. Yeah, which he does later on. Both of those things happen in this movie. Uh-huh. It's it's nuts. I I am not a people person, uh-huh. so absolutely never, ever try that shit in my house. No, so. I, and I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't dare. Yeah. <laughs> Even you, if you just walked in, I know you. Yeah. I'd still be like, oh, I don't know, man. You gotta, wait, yeah, let me think about right. it. <laughs> no, that that one time I stayed with you, I was like, yeah, I have one of these Gatorades, and you uh-huh. like shot me in the kneecap. <laughs> I was like, don't you ever open your fucking mouth and talk to me like that. <laughs> so disrespectful. Um, Eli is from the word go mm-hmm. the most off putting motherfucker in the planet. Okay, so <laughs> I love God the relationship between Daniel and Eli is so good because. Yeah. Daniel is immediately annoyed. Like the facade falls immediately when he realizes realizes Eli is as smart as he is. Uh huh. Like when when he's just you know he's clearly there to just look for any signs of oil. He finds it, mm-hmm. and then he tells the dad, he's like, "Hey, I want to talk to you about buying your ranch." Yeah. Eli immediately knows what's up. He's yes. like, "Oh, you know there's oil here." Well, that's called seepage. Yeah. It that doesn't mean there's anything under there. Like it's such it's such a good performance. He's like, "I want ten thousand dollars." Okay. Well, let's not jump to uh, yeah. You know. Let's not jump our guns. We don't even know what's under there. Fifteen thousand. <laughs> Eli is getting super pushy. Abel is only agreeing with what Eli says, mm-hmm. and it's so smart because both in this scene and the conversation with Paul, the dialogue is so circular. Mm-hmm. Like they're not giving each other anything about what they want, and they keep asking each other the same questions. Yep. And then by the end of it. Of course, Daniel feels like he can never pay him the five grand he owes him because he they don't really agree to anything. Yeah. They have sort of a gentleman's shake on it. But and, and I'm watching this like, I'm not even sure what they decided, but I'm like, wow, business. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> like, what is what is Eli's motivations? Right. Is it just to outswindle the swindler? Like because he's not he's not a snake or like a snake oil salesman like he's genuinely finding the oil right well yeah and i i mean there's that's the thing right is like eli and daniel are both different kinds of snake oil peddlers right yes because okay so that's a good question do you i mean eli really is just a false prophet right i think so i i think he yes he enjoys the he enjoys the attention he enjoys the grandeur Mm -hmm. uh i mean you can see it in all those sequences where he is like hugging the women in the church for a long time Mm -hmm. and each time he shows up his clothes are nicer his church is bigger Uh uh-huh i mean he's got real uncle baby billy energy (laughs) (laughs) what would have been great is and maybe it would have been too on the nose but Uh him like passing around the ties plates like sure getting getting money like i guess that would have been too on the nose about it but it is interesting i kept waiting for it yeah yeah it is interesting that this time watching it, i'm like i don't know man like i maybe there's a part of eli that does believe in this stuff but also he's just i think he wants to i think i think he's just like daniel is he has he's has these aspirations that slowly turn into poison right like yeah. daniel daniel didn't set out to become a, an alcoholic son of a bitch who murders people and feels nothing mm-hmm. uh but he that's what he becomes and i think i think eli really does feel the lord until he's in it for himself yeah until the stock market crashes (laughs) yeah right and 
And like, I guess it's all exemplified with the baptism scene, which is the best scene of the movie. Like, oh, it's unbelievable. It's incredible. But we'll get we'll get there when we get there. I also I think from the from the minute Eli shows up, Daniel is on his like back heels, right? Yeah. Like Because he he there's that moment where you know he's expecting Paul to start talking to him, yeah. and he's like, "Oh, you're Eli someday." And I just kind of like the fact that it's clear that they recast this character, mm-hmm. didn't change any of the dialogue, and we just have to get from the delivery of uh, Daniel Day Lewis's delivery that he's like, okay, well, these are two different people that look yes. the same, and he's the best actor in the world, so of course, <laughs> well, which is crazy because <laughs> of like, course I get it. It's funny to think of just like twins at this time, pre-internet, pre-social uh, security numbers, sure. pre everything. Like being twins must have been fucking wild. Like it must have been crazy, weird, like, right? I was gonna say that's how the Prestige works. There you go. <laughs> Spoilers for the Prestige. H- how do you think like? So many twins must have just been murdered of like people thinking they're getting swindled. Sure. Like, I'm not not dealing with this shit. Bam. <laughs> like, it's, it had to have been nuts. Yeah. Like if you were a twin alive in the 1800s, please write into the several. Oh, episodes. yeah, please. Yeah. Let us know how you're doing. <laughs> what is the significance of the subplot with Mary Sunday being hit by her father for not praying enough? I think that it's just another uh, excuse for Daniel to sort of throw his weight around yeah. because he he makes kind of a sh- show of hugging her in front of Abel yeah. and being like, and he's not going to hit you anymore, is he? But Daniel doesn't seem like the type that would give a shit. Like, it, I don't know why he would care. I don't know. It's so strange because he walks the l- same line with Mary that he does with HW, where yeah. that's not his kid. He seems to be invested in her safety, but also he's parading her around in front of people for the you know the town blessing or whatever to to as like to make himself look good yeah you know what i mean the der- at the front of the derrick yeah it is it is all about image but then he goes the extra step of actually like pulling her aside it's a, it's a very uncomfortable scene too it's like, a real tory lane's move <laughs> it really is it really <laughs> is <laughs> that, that won't be a recent reference when this episode drops no nope, nope, not at all uh, so this guy gets killed at the oh i guess we should have mentioned too uh so they they go to open the Derek. Uh-huh. Paul is asked to bless the Derek. Oh and, yeah, you know Paul uh, Daniel completely snubs him, mm-hmm. which is almost like uh, setting the whole rest of the movie in motion of like all the bad shit that's going to happen to this guy. But this shows this is like one of your first uh, inklings that Eli is a total showman, mm-hmm. right? Like he lays out the story and the speech, and he's like, "I'm going to come up here, and you're going to say these words, and then I'm going to bless it. Mm-hmm. It's a short prayer." And meanwhile, Daniel's being a little dick and like. He's saying, well, I'm going to walk up to the oil well. The Derek. <laughs> yep, yep, the Derek. The, the Derek. I'll walk up to the Derek. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and just like the whole time, he's like, I'm, I, none of this shit's going to happen. So it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Makes up his own prayer. Mm-hmm. It's like, um, it's <laughs> speaking of Trump, it's like when Joe Exotic was like, he's definitely going to pardon me, guys. Don't worry about it. <laughs> 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 sure. Completely snubs the guy. Sure. Uh, so yeah, this guy gets killed at the Derek. And you almost expect... Uh, Daniel to be like so what keep going yeah but when he's like what man did, did I, I know, know him? him yeah ugh ugh what a gross lie it's even worse than him just being like who cares keep moving yeah like, where's the body uh huh I-, I love this recurring thing of him sleeping on the floor mm-hmm. uh, because that's just how he's gotten used to sleeping like Absolutely. he can't he can't enjoy like a nice bed mm-hmm. and he's so annoyed with the workers when he gets there like reminding them of the safety protocols uh-huh. he's like if you go down there you make so- make sure someone knows uh-huh. like he's he's uh it's it's so they're getting dressed down and like it's so crazy well and two other things about this too number one this guy smoking a cigarette while you're chest deep at the bottom of an oil pit the, yes probably not the smartest thing in the world a lot of people smoking <laughs> around oil in this movie and number two daniel all this shit happens and daniel comes in and he's like shut down till midday and i'm uh-huh. like man you can't even give him the rest of the day off after this guy no just give us some time to get this body out uh-huh. yeah collect his belongings absolutely but he uh. also takes this as a way of okay well here's how i can stick it to the church mm-hmm. like you need to stop messing with my boys and making them come over to see your sermons because they're tired yep absolutely it's such a weird like connecting dots that aren't there uh-huh. <laughs> and then yeah paul danig is on this show and proving once again he's one of the greatest character actors of our generation. But the devil is in your hands, and I will suck it out. The, the line you have the arthritis, yeah, <laughs> gets me every time. You, you have the arthritis, and then uh, 
He was like, that was one goddamn hell of a show. And I'm like, man. <laughs> it's so good. Choosing your words so specifically, yes. like you're speaking blasphemy to this priest is such a spit in the face. Like, if they can't work, the well can't produce gold. Uh, what, what is it? The well can't produce and blow gold mm-hmm. all over the place. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, Paul Dano is saying like, if, if you know, I, if it goes, the, the demons in your hands, I will suck them out and <laughs> I will bite them. If I don't have teeth, I will gum them. It's uh-huh. so... So Old Testament, yeah. like, it's so good. It's such a good performance. And the ghost is gone. Yeah, yeah, he does, like, a Kamehameha out of the door. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, one of my favorite bits of production design happens right around here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's when we're cutting between the, the the Derek and the growing church, and they are becoming indistinguishable in design. Yep. Like, they're they're both being you know built out of plywood they're it's basically like raising a barn mm-hmm. it, it's really well done because they cut back and forth quickly and i lose track of where we are a couple of times mm-hmm. and I, I just I, that really shows the the parallels between the two of them so well but both towering infernos in their own right uh-huh. like it's it's it is an interesting choice and okay so the Derek goes up here this and is apocalyptic like it's, it's so it's, crazy <laughs> like this unbelievably is unbelievably shot this is the worst thing that's happened in any of these people's lives uh-huh. like this gas explosion happens it blows hw back he's now deaf there's oil everywhere the oil is catching on fire. Yeah. And Johnny Greenwood's score is incredible. This rattling percussion. It's uh-huh. the most Radiohead sounding bit of the soundtrack. And I love it. It's just pumping. It's so, and it's off. It's almost like offbeat yes. at the same time too. Yeah. And yeah. Just, just Daniel running with an just oil drenched and carrying a now deaf HW. Yeah. As like the score is pumping and the oil spring. It's so good. Like it's, it's gut wrenching. And oh man, the, again, talking about like, choosing your words perfectly hw's line is i can't hear my voice Mm -hmm. it's not i can't hear you i don't know what you're saying it's i can't hear my voice and that's so panicked it's uh it's heartbreaking it's like some save from private ryan shit yeah it's like it's it's incredible this kid's performance is it's so low-key but it's also exactly how it needs to be and it's exactly right it's this is what we were talking about with history of violence earlier this season like you know it when you see it Mm -hmm. when a a kid performance is working right (laughs) i want to put a tag on that but i'm gonna skip over because i don't think it'll land right. oh that so that anyway, fra- the way i phrase that <laughs> no well you're like uh, the i know it when i see it i'm like yeah just like porn i know a good child actor performance when i see jesus it. <laughs> hey I, I said i didn't want to say it yeah so. no, i'm glad i'm glad you did yeah that was the right move so <laughs> this whole scene is like a tour de force in cinematography like this yeah. it's incredible you mentioned it earlier but like him staring yeah in the pitch black with the flames illuminating him there were a couple of posters that were just stills from the this scene mm-hmm. yeah I, j- just you know this fire rages on until the next morning uh-huh. and the shot of him like from behind like leading the the barrels of dynamite yes like this it's so good like just what a what a way to film this action scene for me it's the it's the close-up of him still soaked in oil with the pipe in his mouth mm-hmm. just sort of like all right i've done my job and, and it's been hours yeah like hours that this has been happening so yeah, like he, he leaves his son. He has to get another guy to force his son off of him. Tells him to hold him down because mm-hmm. he can't he can't explain why he has to go or yeah. what's happening. And then like just the scene of them two, him like big spooning him. Yeah. Oh, it's it's one of the best shots of the movie. But like it's so good. But then like you can tell, okay, this guy's got somewhat of a heart. He's comforting this boy. Yeah. But even still in this moment, he can't even be bothered to let his newly deaf quote unquote son yeah. deal with the fact that he's now deaf because he's so in- impatient and annoyed by it. He's like, all right, that's enough. Like this kid can't hear. I know. I know. <laughs> and he's like yelling in his ear. And he, and he, <laughs> he does that through, through the rest of the movie mm-hmm. is he like, he will continue to speak out loud to him as though he can hear him. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it, 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 there's no consideration for the reality of what HW is going through. Uh, even when, like, there's this that really lovely scene where HW is looking out the window and he doesn't notice that Daniel's talking to him until he sits on the bed and you and you see the bed kind of move. I know. And Daniel is talking to Fletcher and essentially you can feel him trying to find different ways of not saying the phrase who is available to work with a deaf child. Yep. Like he's like, is there someone uh, who could talk to him? Like, or, you know, like he, it, he just won't say what's happened. Mm-hmm. He won't deal with it. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Like the, the duality of this character, like how much he wants to comfort this kid and almost also how much he can't be bothered. Right. 
Yeah, absolutely. And so, and then, <laughs> then we get this great confrontation with Eli. Oh my God. So yeah, like Eli approaches Daniel and I love how they played like the long shot. Like mm-hmm. Daniel just stops his conversation dead with the two guys he's talking to and just stares and watches this guy approach. It's so threatening. And that shot of the sky perfectly reflected in the oil field. So good. Eli now the best dressed man in town next to Daniel. Mm-hmm. And he just, <laughs> when are we getting our money? Open palm slapping the shit out of Paul Dano. Oof. Like, Paul Dano's made a career out of just getting his ass beat. By- <laughs> yeah, I haven't expected him to start singing Ave Maria in this scene. <laughs> this is not how it was supposed to go. <laughs> or just whispering to Daniel, they didn't cry until I left them. Oh, like- <laughs> Jesus. I forgot about that line. It's so scary. Uh huh. And then, yeah, the, the fake brother shows up. Yeah. Th- pretending to be Daniel's brother saying. Right before that, we get the great, uh, you know, aren't you a healer? Can't you fix my boy? Oh, my God. I'm going to bury you underground, Eli. Oh. And he just like. Rubbing the mud in his hair. Covers him in mud. You hear, you hear Siren Hines like off to the side go, come on, Daniel. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, again. He, he beats the shit out of him. Yeah. Eli confronting his dad is a great scene. Oh, you stupid, stupid man. Like. He goes, he lunges over the table for him, too. Yeah. So here's my question. And maybe this is something that I just don't put together. Okay. But like, Paul disappears out of this movie. Paul, and- yes. And it's not something the movie makes very clear. I think part of that is due to the recast during filming. Yeah. But like, it, it is an odd thing, right? That like, this is the only time they ever really acknowledge uh, Paul took the money and ran well, is essentially what I'm getting from it. That's my question. Because when it comes up at the end, he's, he tells uh, Eli... Well, actually, you know what? Let's wait till we get there because we're okay. almost there. Sure. Because actually, we're we're kind of flying through this movie. <laughs> it's really funny because when I I was looking on Reddit and there's people who are like on their third or fourth watch when they realize that Eli and Paul are meant to be separate characters. That which is kind of nuts. Right. Like, it's not that big of a. And then I've seen people being like, "Do you think Paul was actually Eli and he was fucking with him?" I'm like, "No, no, because I don't. his dad acknowledges that Paul exists." Yes. Yeah. So that's a stupid theory. Yeah. It's also like when people are still bringing up the Jack and Rose fitting on the door thing. And I'm like, it's in the movie. Did you not watch the movie? They tried doing it. Yeah. Can we move past this? Yeah. Yes. It, James Cameron just recently coming out me like, I filmed a whole thing. We did test. I'm like, it's in the movie. Yeah. We see it. You show him try. <laughs> yeah. It's so stupid. I can't believe people are still on about that. Right. So many, so many other things you could be worried about. <laughs> like uh, like having secret brothers show up on your doorstep. A secret brothers showing up and then forcing your son to drink boozy milk so he'll go to sleep. Oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> I, and and it's, it's interesting. So, I, I love Kevin J. O'Connor's like first real line of dialogue in this movie is, my name is Henry. I'm Henry. That's mm-hmm. like his explanation for who he is. Mm-hmm. But this was like a real thing like a regular thing for men in the gold and oil rushes to just have secret families Mm -hmm. because they'd be gone for six months at a time that's insane yeah and without any record you could just show up and be like yeah i'm your brother hey it's me yeah Yeah, yeah. uh and and yet you're right like hw seems to have lost all of his will at this point like he doesn't he's not fighting anymore he he doesn't even really emote at all after he loses his hearing it's not till he comes back and starts beating the shit out of daniel <laughs> yeah well well he realized he he's right away not he's not, he knows this guy's not on the level yeah. which i really like like he can I see love it that too through Daniel because daniel's looking for any anyone to have a, a real relationship with that isn't business oriented yes and then when he finds out that that's all this guy wants is business he's he puts a bullet in his head like yeah. it's it's kind of sad like yeah. it's and, and the scene here when he's drunk and they're having a, you know hw's gone to bed and oh, he's like i see the worst in people henry oh. i've built up my hatred over the years little by little and i want no one else to succeed <sighs> Oof. but you have offered me a second breath of life oh yeah and there are times when i look at people and see nothing worth liking Ugh. oh what a line he's it's- so fucking good and the, this scene is fucking like same. <laughs> <Fucking> <laughs> right. same this is the scene that gets him the oscar Absolutely. like as far as i'm concerned and this is what they play at the oscars when they show little clips of all the performances uh-huh. this one and this is where his humanity is just is gone because the next morning he puts hw on the train and oh he's like gosh. yeah we're gonna go on a trip well but- hw sets that fire first yes that's right that's why he puts them away <laughs> and i've seen a couple of like interesting reads on this scene some people have found like think that it's because hw knows that henry's a fake mm-hmm. other people say it's because he and i think this is actually what it says on like the plot summary online on wikipedia is that 
like he's jealous of him, which I don't get that at all. I I do. I think it's both. Really, I think it's a little That's bit of interesting. I, I don't think it's a jealousy to the point of like he's mine, no one else can have him kind of thing. Right. But of like it's an outsider coming in, he's taking away. Like I need help, right? And now all all his attention is gone to you. Of course, he's gonna act out. Yeah, because th- this is like the worst thing that's ever happened to him, and his dad isn't even attempting to understand it. His dad, who he doesn't realize is not his dad, right? which is like it's a lot to process. And then like I kind of give it to. Daniel for not lashing out on this kid like as far as we know yeah yeah because like you you could expect him to like like almost go go at this kid like he went at Paul Dano and and Eli in the mud but like he just kind of picks him up carries him back inside and then the next morning he's like yeah we're gonna go on a trip oh hold on I gotta go talk to the conductor real quick right and not even looking at this kid as he's the shot of Fletcher pulling HW back into the train car while he's just walking alongside it is heartbreaking it's one of the best shots in the movie it's so good it's incredible and uh so they go on a him and henry go on a a little beach trip (laughs) sure and the way that they you know that paul uh, daniel figures out that henry is not who he says he is of Uh like oh you remember the peach tree dance or whatever he says and he's like right and he doesn't laugh at it yeah he doesn't have a real reaction like what a hell of a way to like put it together Uh, there's a uh, an incredible shot of daniel day lewis trying to form the next question yeah. and he can't like he wants to ha- he- you could see the anger coming over him well his he he at, while they're sitting there next to each other on the beach his lips kind of purse like mm-hmm. like the words are trying to come out and he can't just be like okay what's going on yeah <laughs> you know yeah and just confronting this like the, the next scene too of like they're clearing like some kind of brothel or something uh-huh. and henry just being like can i have give, some money give me some money can i have some money please can i have some money please yeah. like it, it comes together so well and then the confrontation uh, of like look i'm not your real brother but i did meet him and he died he died of tuberculosis yep and he told me to come find you i just thought it'd be fitting uh, and then the way like like it's not like pulling out a six shooter and putting a bullet in this guy's head no. it's like a little it's a pellet gun mm-hmm. like a little yeah he shoots him in the head but it's clearly not enough to just like completely shatter his skull it's yeah. just like it's putting a hole in the side of your head to bleed out it's a sad death it's very and then the little yelp yeah. that henry puts out oh it's brutal it's brutal uh, the the line that kills me is like i'm your friend daniel i'm not trying to hurt you yes. just survive yes and then de- daniel can't do it death yeah because it's not it's not about surviving it's about thriving right but like, this breaks whole- his heart yeah this is like destroys him i mean this is like you're talking about the last shred of his humanity this is it yeah he wakes up the next morning to the sound of the gunshot ringing Oof. in his head still so 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 he cries himself to sleep after burying this guy yeah and then like the oil in the ground covering the coal oh uh, it's yeah the imagery is beautiful but yeah just imagine falling asleep in the woods being woken up by a gunshot and being told by some old man that you've never met that you have to be baptized yeah. in order to get what you want like what a wild <laughs> and he knows what he did he hands him his own pistol yeah. he's like look you gotta you gotta fix yourself and then i will let you have my land and him just being like uh, five thousand dollars no you gotta go get baptized ten thousand dollars right <laughs> he'll do anything to not get baptized like right so oh yeah he's funny. like it's uh six thousand <laughs> yeah. uh, it's so good we rejo- re- rejoin eli mm-hmm. in his way bigger church this is way like, nicer it's well lit yeah yeah it's got a nice little like cut out in the back mm-hmm. so that the cross can like shine onto his face it's so good it's so beautiful this church is so good and just like he's he- we all know the doctrine <laughs> of universal salvation is a lie uh-huh. the, the sermon that he's giving and then being like are there any sinners in here any new people and he knows daniel's there oh uh, it's so it's so fucked and, yeah. and daniel's just like motherfucker like under his breath this is you 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 mean you teased this earlier it's the best scene in the movie but yep. the uh the back and forth between them of he gets you humi- daniel gets humiliated here but he never stops mocking i it's it's so layered there's there's the i'm kind of embarrassed i have to do this but also i want the blood yeah, give, give me the me blood, blood Eli, <laughs> let me on, hurry up <laughs> and the fact that he's like admit that you're a sinner i'm a sinner admit that you've done terrible things i've done terrible things admit you abandoned your child and, and say it louder say it again just the look that he gives eli oh my god if there weren't 40 <laughs> people in that room he would murder eli right now he would choke the life out of this guy yeah, yeah it's like just the seething anger and yeah. but but also simultaneously yeah like i think he does feel a little bit of that oh of sure like, like the, I've, I've abandoned my child i've abandoned my boy no he he fully does like he, he, it's the first time he's really confronted it 
And then the second he gets that water poured on his head, he's back to being an asshole. Like yeah. he, he, he mocks him back and he goes, Oh, there he is. Yep. Whenever he like gets popped in the head. Yep. And, and Eli's not giving an inch either because Daniel's sitting back down. Everyone's shaking his hand, congratulating him. And you hear in the background, Eli can't help but mention, uh, we're still waiting for Mr. Plainview's $5,000 donation. Yep. Yep. What a piece of shit. <laughs> well, he also says, like, as you're baptizing him, it's just such a good lie delivery, but he's like, do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And he's so quickly goes, yes, I do. Yes, I do. And, like, <laughs> we got to cut her up. And then, yeah, the little whisper of there's the pipeline. That's, oh. yes. It's so good. It's perfect. It's, it's a business transaction. It is. It's a public, hum- it's a flogging in, in public, uh-huh. but it's, it's. I, I can't get over the, I have abandoned my boy. Like, it chokes me up every fucking time. It's so good. It is, it is so wild how many moments from this movie are out of context have become out of context memes mm-hmm. that in context are still God shattering wrenching. right God wrenching. like we've we've been laughing about i drink your milkshake for years mm-hmm. and then you watch it in the movie and you're just like god this, this is the best thing i've ever seen it, it's it is a because i rewatched it again right before we recorded it is a funny scene it's it a is. funny performance but yeah. it's also like the implications and like how ridiculed he like how humiliated he makes eli like yes. it's it's a lot to process at one time but yes but before we get there because we're actually are, we're kind of flying through this episode we're almost there we are yeah but <laughs> what, what do you think he says to eli here after the baptism because there's a little moment where you know he he gets up yeah he's smiling and then he kind of loses the smile right yeah, he, daniel clearly says something to him where no one else can hear and then eli's smile just drops and i I'm sure it's probably a threat of some sort. Like I'm sh- I feel like it's something like you've humiliated me here today. I won't let you forget it. Or- basically, yeah. Like you, you will. I, I will rule the day that this shit comes back. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> there will be blood. There, that, that's he, it. That's he leans it. in and whispers the title of the movie. Oh, that's it. He's like Eli. There will be blood. <laughs> there will be an ocean of blood at your feet. What and- do you mean, Daniel? <laughs> so good. And so we we kind of cut to the future. Like yeah, sometime later, HW is coming home. Yeah, Daniel is very wealthy. Uh-huh. Like I don't think the stock market's affected him yet, and like the oil business is booming, and he's got his own butler. He's got his own private bowling alley. Oh, oh we we. Uh, I just want to mention. I love the 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 moment before this when he goes to dinner with HW. And he puts the napkin over his face and oh, just yeah. acts like a total jackass to Mr. Tilford. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, okay. So, we, we did skip over a good section here. So, H.W. Yeah. comes back. He's been to a deaf school. The first thing he does is just kick the shit out of Daniel. Yeah, and Daniel is still trying to talk to him normally. Mm-hmm. H.W. or uh, Daniel hugs him. And H.W., his hands are just kind of at his side mm-hmm. until Daniel says, I love you, son. And then... HW can't stop hitting him. And, and I love that Daniel lets him get that out. He's he does. Like, All right. All right. Okay. He's like that. You, you've earned that. Yeah. And so, yeah, he's got a, a, a translator for him who can, you know, interpret the sign language. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, they, they, he's done it. He's made, it, it's funny too, because they show at one point, He's like, we're going to build a derrick here. There's oil in this town. We're going to yeah. get it. They cut later. There's like three derricks. Right. I don't know if you noticed that, but like they keep they keep building more and more because yeah. this turned out very prosperous for him. I, but- I also love these scenes of Mary like studying the sign language mm-hmm. and the transition into the wedding is just a really like a really beautiful moment. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah, no, this, the scene with the in the restaurant too is really good. Of he just he wants this guy to just give him credit. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you know what? Because. We forgot to mention, okay, so uh, Standard Oil, one of the big oil companies, comes to Daniel and says, hey, we know you've got oil in this town. We uh-huh. know you want to build a pipeline to the ocean. But they won't stop mentioning his kid. Yeah. He's like, we can get your, you can get your kid all the help he needs. And that's a slight to Daniel. You can spend time with him. Yeah. yeah. Are you telling me how to run my family? Yeah. He's like, don't you ever fucking tell me how to run my family, which is great. <laughs> and in this scene, like, he takes it up a notch. He's like, I'm taking care of my family. Mm-hmm. So you look like a fool, don't you? Yeah. It's <laughs> so funny. It's so- the, the way he says, yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Like, because he's like, he he wants this guy to feel the the shame and the embarrassment, and the guy doesn't. He's like, all right, dude, you, it's so uncomfortable. And he's like, no, you you look insane. Like, yeah. you're being an idiot. You're putting a napkin over your head and doing weird voices. You, you told me you were going to come into my house and slit my throat. Like, it's, you're crazy. Oh, yeah. That's that's how he ends that scene, is he, like, pats him on the shoulder. And he goes, okay, well, you remember what I told you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, he's a gangster. Yeah, like, it's, yeah. it's almost Scarface- like level uh, like in this movie it's it's so good so funny like if he had goons this would be scarface which uh-huh. i'm glad he doesn't i'm glad it's all a one-man show basically but 
So we cut, yeah, the future. He's a raging alcoholic, like uh, falling asleep on the floor, sh- shooting shit in the house. Shooting shit in the house is great. It's it's him in like tattered pajamas, falling asleep in the bowling alley lane. Uh, <laughs> His fucking butler's got to wake him up. And when when HW comes to see him to talk to him, mm-hmm. they they ask if the other guy in the room can leave, and he oh. goes, "Well, this is my this is my closest associate, and uh-huh. it's nobody that we know." Yep, that's how lonely he is. It's also like when HW has his translator say, uh, "I prefer." to speak to him private he doesn't even look at the interpreter guy and goes you, you can't, can't speak, speak. what a goddamn asshole this guy is yeah. oh he's mocking him the entire time although i will say that interpreter uh has some dramatic translations he like sure does. towards he the sure end does. of it he's just going like yes father yeah like- <laughs> he absolutely is so he comes and says i'm gonna try and go to mexico and start my oil business i have to do my own thing i can't just be living in your shadow i miss the fields i miss working outside mm-hmm. and, yeah and he's like oh immediately this guy's like oh so you're my competition now like it's such a bastardy fucking thing to say he says this makes you my competitor yes yes he's like no it's nothing <laughs> like that and then he just goes off he's like by the way i'm not your f-. he keeps calling him dad he's like i'm not your dad he goes i found you in a box in the desert you're lower than a bastard you're a bastard in a basket bastard in a basket what a fucking line uh. Ugh. And yeah, uh, HW says, like, I'm glad that I, you, there's none of you in me. Oh, it's so, like, it, it is like, you know, a guy closing himself off in the world because he's such a misanthrope. But, yeah. like, the difference being that he succeeded. Yes. Like, it's crazy to know he got what he wanted, but, like, is this what he wanted? Right. Like, the isolation? Like, I don't know. It's it's a lot. To, it's it's a very interesting way to end the movie. Of uh, And then... Of course, Eli coming back. Eli, who addresses him as an old friend, and that's when I realized this motherfucker has not aged a day. Nope. He's an old friend. Eli is now basically the Joel Osteen of the 1920s uh-huh. or whatever time this is. I've been doing radio. A bit doing radio. And and Daniel Plainview has sort of regressed. I mean, he's sleeping, like you said, he's sleeping on the floor, but he's eating... Like, there's a pot next to him that's clearly, like, just full of old coffee. Mm-hmm. He's eating, like... Just a, a well-done steak. <laughs> like, yeah, a brisket from, uh-huh. like, an old, uh, ca- like, iron uh, plate. Uh-huh. He's just eating, like, camping food, basically. He might as well have fucking MREs. <laughs> uh-huh. But I love that, like, Eli comes in, and Daniel's already rolling his eyes. He's like, God damn it. Yeah. And then, like, just the swagger and the suaveness. My brother by wet, by marriage. Oh. Yeah. Hey, that's, that's the thing I forgot about in this movie, too, that they technically are related at this point. Uh-huh. But, like, I love how the tables are turned here, because uh. this is just the baptism scene all over again. Yeah. And so, Eli comes in, and I guess I'll recap the end of the movie. Eli comes in and says... You know, hey, Daniel, uh, I've come here. I'm doing well. You seem to be doing well, too. But oh, yeah, it's such a relief to see you doing well. And uh-huh. Daniel, meanwhile, is like, can't stand up straight. <laughs> he's got like, he's so, so like, just the hair of the dog. He needs it right now. Like and his shoes are squeaking on the floor of the bowling mm-hmm. alley. <laughs> he needs his juice, as we've talked about before. Yeah, he needs his juice. And and he like comes in and is basically like, he's, he's swagged out now. He's got this giant <laughs> yeah. cross necklace. And he's like. We, one thing that we we kind of glossed over, but so he doesn't go with standard oil. He goes with union oil. They build a pipeline to the ocean. But the big thing is there's one person in town that never gave the rights to his property for them to drill. And that was Bandy. Remember Mr. Bandy? So he couldn't go a pipeline directly through. He had to go around, but that's why he needed union oil to help do it. Uh-huh. And so Eli comes in. He's like, hey, you know, there's still that oil on Bandy's property. We never were able to get because he you know, wouldn't sell out. I've come in here and, and you know, you never donated to the church. So why? Why don't we make a deal like uh, you know you take this lease you pump the oil out of bandy's property and you know donate some portion to us to the church and we'll everything will be gravy uh-huh and uh he's like all right i'll do that but i want you to admit to me right now that you are a false prophet and you know that you were taking advantage of all these people god is a superstition is what he says yes god is a superstition Ooh. and then Eli's like, oh, I, I can't do that. And he wears, he's like, come on, Eli. And he just wears him down. And eventually he's like, all right, fine. God is a superstition. I'm a false prophet. And I love that Daniel's just instigating it. Like, well, come on, say it like you mean it. Say uh-huh. it like it's one of your sermons. <laughs> it's so good. And they then, can't hear you in the back. And just the, he's like, pretend your congregation's here. They can't hear you in the back. And then as Eli is just screaming at the top of his lungs, I'm a false prophet. And then just the immediate cut to those areas have been drilled. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. It's such a good button on the internet. It's really, really good. It's so, and like I said, this whole ending is so fucking funny. And 
Eli being like, what? And he's like, yeah, there's a thing called drainage, you idiot. Yeah. Like, where if I drain, if, if, I, if the whole area is a circle and I drain the outside of the circle, guess what? The inside of the circle is going to get I dra- own what's under it. Yeah. The inside of the circle is going to get drained, too. But he's, he's like, coaching him during this. Like, you stand up, put your glass down. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to see you say it. Get down and on your knees. You're right. Like, <laughs> it is a total, it is a total, like, change in a power dynamic. Absolutely. Because Eli comes in so hot, right? Mm-hmm. I've been spreading the gospel far and wide so much travel for him mm-hmm. i'm on radio now and it's at this moment that he drops the bullshit and says i'm in trouble i've been sinning god didn't tell me yeah, that the economy has destroyed me the, yeah the stock market was gonna crash yep yep so he's clearly like like faking like how much money he's got and he's on de- he's in desperate times and- uh-huh yeah, like he's like, it's drainage, you idiot. He's like, if I get, I get everything around it, I get everything underneath it too. And it's so funny because like you never think about that, like, right? Of course it would, of absolutely. And then like Eli's crying and he says, "Stop crying, you sniveling ass." <laughs> It's so good. But it escalates so fast. It does. He's like, you you know, why you didn't succeed is because you weren't the chosen bo- uh, son. Paul was the chosen one. Uh-huh. You know what he did? I gave him $10,000. He went and started his own company. He makes $5,000 a week. He, he, and it is it is so smart that it is the exact amount mm-hmm. that Eli has been waiting for for a decade now, mm-hmm. more. Mm-hmm. And this is what I was going to ask. Do you think that's true? Oh, I, I I can't imagine Daniel has kept up with with Paul Sunday. Yeah. There's no way. I can I yeah, I think Paul got that finder's fee and ran and that's the end of his story. Yes. And I I think this is all just to rub Eli's nose in it. It is 100%. Yeah. That's what I don't I don't that's why I understand like the the debates online about it of like, "Oh, what happened to Paul? Is Paul actually Eli or did Paul actually run away and create?" I don't think it matters. It's uh, no. not. The whole point is I'm here to humiliate Eli. I'm going to do whatever I can to do that. Absolutely. He says, you are just uh, something that crawled out of your mother's filth. Like, it's such a good ribbing, dude. Like, he dresses this guy down yeah. so fucking hard. And then, of course, the infamous milkshake dialogue, which is so... <laughs> yeah. It's so it's such a good... Like, because Eli just can't accept it. He's like, that's not true. Stop saying these things. He's like, if you would just drill there. And he goes, drain it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's it's he's frothing at the, he, he literally is. is like spitting and drooling and it's yeah. such a good performance it's it's and, and then the milkshake line i'm just like look if you've got a milkshake and i have a straw all the way over here and he's like do it like because he's he's doing like a little ape walk he's like if i'm all the way down here oh yeah he's having a blast this is the best thing that's happened to daniel in years yes the, if 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 daniel could come right now this was <laughs> how he would do it the, the alleyway would be slipping because there like, will become there will become right here in this scene because it you know he's rock hard fucking uh-huh. putting this guy down <laughs> like he, he didn't get he didn't get the satisfaction with his son dressing him down so yeah. he's got to do it to this guy and it's just well he's like you're not in your you're not in your little church now boy like i'm gonna take care of you yeah no one will protect you yeah. exactly and just like yeah the, the i drink your milkshake i drink it up and then just throwing him down the alleyway throwing bowling balls at him Ugh. hitting the the bucket of water that splashes on the camera with the bowling ball it's so good yes and just going full feral on this guy like getting the bowling ball pin and and the whole time eli shouting daniel don't do this we are brothers we're brothers please forgive me i'm sorry which is you know it's is true in more than one way like a brother-in-law but also like just they are so alike yes and they can't even see it which is it's so funny yes and yeah the the way to what a way to end a movie just beating this guy to death drop it to the floor and just saying i'm finished yeah and cut to black what yeah. a- and he sits there for an unknown amount of time yeah. too and it's so many different ways you can interpret that of like I'm finished as in I've done the deed I've set out to do which is to get back at Eli Uh I'm finished as in this is the one thing my career's over I'm going to jail yep yep and I'm finished. I, I my son has walked out of my life because of what I've done, or my story is over. Yeah, you it, know, it, it could be like quite literally the movie. The story is over, <laughs> or it could also be I just came. Like I, I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's uh, what a way to it's it's such a like it's an operatic ending. Like it's it's a curtain closed, take a bow uh-huh. kind of moment. And it's again, I think this if 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 this would have been Daniel Day Lewis's last movie. What a way to end it with the lines, I'm finished. I'm finished. Oh my gosh, you're right. Like, I did it. I have done everything that an actor can do, and Ugh. I've gone out on top. Like, And again, not that the Phantom Thread is by any means like a, a, a step below it, but it is a different step. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's a totally different thing. So, 
Yeah, man, I, I'm glad we revisited this movie. It's it's still one of the best. I'll go ahead and say it now. I, I truly do think this is one of the best films of all time. Yeah, I agree. Daniel Day Lewis is obviously one of the greatest actors ever. Uh-huh. And PTA's just restrained, deft hand when it comes to directing yeah. is unprecedented. For someone who made Boogie Nights at such a young age and uh-huh. like fully had the grasp of how to not like just be a young director, if that makes sense. Like yeah. the derogatory nature of being a young director. Like he got it and he still has it. And it's licorice pizza was great too. I've liked almost everything I've seen from him. So. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I would totally recommend watching this. If you haven't seen it, if you have seen it and haven't revisited it in a while, it's totally worth it. Uh-huh. I felt like I was watching it again for the first time. Get get yourself some brandy or some whiskey cozy <laughs> up on the couch, especially yeah. in the, in the winter time right now. Get it's, a boozy milkshake. Get a boozy milkshake. Shake. and ugh, i i'm gonna have to take a, a nap before we do the next episode because i'm i'm down i am so full of dairy right now it's uh, <laughs> not even fair there's an ocean of dairy in my belly <laughs> all right well uh do you have anything else to say before we should get to our wrap-up segments here no let's do it all right let's talk about prop cop and for new listeners to the show prop cop is where we look at all the props in the movie there will be blood all of the pieces of prop and uh, we snag one each for ourselves, for our own personal collection. Uh-huh. I'll go ahead and give you mine. Yeah. I really want the calligraphy pen yeah. that Daniel uses to sign his name at the beginning of the movie. It's good. It's a great looking pen. I haven't had a cal- calligraphy pen in like over like a decade and a half. Uh-huh. So I, I, I don't know. I There's something great about a good sliding, uh, gliding pen like that. So. Absolutely. Uh, what about you? What, what prop do you want? I, I want whenever, um, whenever Eli comes into Daniel's office to talk about the black Blessing. Mm-hmm. You can see Daniel has a mason jar full of pipes. He on sure his desk. does. He sure does. <laughs> I just feel like I would look classy as fuck if I had that on my desk right now. Oh, it's great. It's it's good. Yeah. We also didn't talk about the uncut gem of pure silver that Daniel finds. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uncut gems. Adam Sandler coming in and snagging that from him would have been really good. <laughs> all right. Well, what about bit parts? Uh, which is, of course, where we look at all the uh, smaller roles in the movie, all the extras. Yeah. And we recast them as ourselves. I There's a lot to choose from in this movie. Yes. Lots of good uh, little actors here. So. Yeah, I changed mine a couple times. Yeah, same here. What what extra, what character would you like to be in the movie? When, uh, when everybody's walking down the stairs to see the new road mm-hmm. that leads to the church mm-hmm. there's one worker who just shoulder checks eli oh yeah i remember that guy yeah i want to be that guy <laughs> yeah uh i kind of want to be just the the first guy that gets the beam to the face Ooh, yeah like or or even the second guy the one that's smoking the cigarette I th- actually i take that guy i want to be that guy <laughs> yeah you get a little uh a squib oh sure a little bit of a squib oh yeah it's nasty no lines but you get to do like do some little bit of work there it's it's a gross and do like a yeah <laughs> <laughs> I would have played it up for the camera for a bit, but you know. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, okay. Without further ado, let's talk about the silver lining to There Will Be Blood. Yeah. There will be silver linings. <laughs> Mine was that uh, if you take him at his word, Paul got his money and ran. Yes. And was successful. So uh, what do you got? H.W. found someone who loved and understood him and got to have a fresh start away from Daniel Plainview. And also will probably be, be successful. So. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, the, the silver lining is everyone who wanted, who needed to get away from him did. Yes. Either by death yep. or or by marriage or by money. So, which I, I, maybe there is some truth to that. Because what a way that would be as like a trifecta, right? Of like all these three people that came into his life that affected him the most. Paul yeah. with setting him up in the town. Eli with knocking him down. And H.W for like getting him there like sure. for one to go out for money one to go out for love and one to go out through death i feel like there's some nice poetry there yeah absolutely it's a nice symmetry so yeah uh unfortunately for daniel there is no silver lining i think uh he's going down yes. he's going down hard yep so uh yeah that's that's all i got let's talk about uh if, if you know if you watch this movie and the ending left you a little dour uh a little upset because uh paul dano gets uh <laughs> beat to death once again sure <laughs> uh what's a movie people should double feature with there will be blood as a uh pick me up i would recommend another movie where uh people head out into the desert for fame and fortune with kevin j o'connor mm-hmm. <laughs> 1999's the mummy there you go and what a what a good time too with the well being out with the Brendan Fraser absolutely the the Brendasans the Brendasans yes I also went with a movie that's uh, a bit of a period piece that's also set in the old west uh-huh. but with a lot more humor and a movie that. 
people live, love to say the words you couldn't make today, <laughs> but I think that's all bullshit. Oh boy. But even still, I am going to go with the ever classic Blazing Saddles. Yeah. Fantastic choice. Fun time. If you've never seen it, I think uh, the younger generation, you should brace yourselves for a little bit, uh-huh. but it is a fun. I mean, it's the guys who made Looney Tunes making a Western. It's, <laughs> it's a great movie. I'm tired of playing the game. <laughs> the common clave, you know, morons. <laughs> it's such a good movie. But I feel like that could be a scene from this movie. Like uh, Daniel talking to HW. <laughs> <laughs> See that one? Steady as a rock, but I shoot with this hand. <laughs> but I, d- I look for oil with this one. <laughs> Well, uh, Nathan, is there anything in your notes that we forgot to mention uh, or any last parting thoughts for There Will Be Blood? No, just that it's fantastic. I mm-hmm. know that's such a, not a, like a, a lukewarm it's not a hot take. take. It's not a hot take at all. Yeah. Like, go watch There Will Be Blood. You owe it to yourself to uh, to revisit it. Mm-hmm. And if you've never seen it, even us telling you about it, it's still worth watching. Totally. Like, it's still, yeah, it's still a good dad for noon. Because what you're not getting here is all of the quiet, contemplative moments. I mm-hmm. mean, it is not a movie that really, like, insists upon itself. You know what I mean? Mean. No, it's very self-reflecting at times yes. in, in, in the quieter moments. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I do feel like it's a cautionary tale. And I hope I would hope that uh, more people in power. All you aspiring oil barons out there. Yeah. I was going to say, I would hope that more people that have made it in life and uh, business would watch this movie and maybe get the right things out of it. Uh-huh. But that's wishful thinking. Totally. Um, yeah. If you've got thoughts on There Will Be Blood or on about the show in general, you can email us at the Civil Lines playlist at gmail.com mm-hmm. or you can DM us over on Instagram, Twitter, or even at TikTok, which we're up on now. We are. Yeah. If you haven't already uh, checked us out over there, there are uh, some highlights of the show, some selects and everything that don't make it on twitter and instagram that you can only find there yeah check it out there and thanks for everyone that's been uh you know liking subscribing and all that good stuff over there too it's been great totally and yeah you can also check out our subreddit reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist and if you haven't already please give us some feedback tell your friends about the show give us the like all that good stuff now because of scheduling conflicts Mm -hmm. we are having to kind of mix up our existing schedule as it was right and uh we're having to record things a little out of order and uh release them a little bit out of order than we had originally planned so while this was my pick for this week next week is also my pick let's do it and it's a movie we've teased a couple of times (laughs) not only on this episode but in general in the past yeah it'll be a surprise to no one but i do have a clue for what we're talking about next week great And that is, if you don't return for our episode next week, you'll wish you'd never been born. (laughs) (laughs) And just a reminder, we're recording these back to back Uh today. So like, what a, what a bit of whiplash. A total shift is about to happen. It's going to be crazy. (laughs) Like I watched this movie, today's movie and next week's movie on the same day (laughs) this weekend. (laughs) So like, I just felt fully out of my mind by the end of the day. It's, it's going to be a lot. Next week's going to be a lot. Uh Go ahead and uh, if there were impressions on this episode you could bet your ass there would get, there's going to be some voice work done on next week's boy oh boy there will be baby, baby. Uh, <laughs> so, so tune in next week uh, where we'll find out uh, what that episode is yeah I wish you the best of luck between now and then absolutely all the masters of your own universes <laughs> so Nathan uh-huh. I'm glad we got to talk about this movie Me too. hopefully you know uh, we'll, we'll find Mally whether or not his wells are working or not <laughs> yeah or at least his twin brother uh, Oh, oh my god could you imagine Mally with a twin uh-huh. I don't wish that upon any anything <laughs> in this world if, if you're out there someone who can grant wishes that's one I do not want Okay. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah that's all uh, I'll say this rest in peace oatmeal and Eli and, Eli. and uh, as always drainage <laughs> <laughs> excelsior 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 Excelsior! Oh, look it up!
Hello YouTube! If you've made it this far, thanks! Could you do us one more favor? Could you hit those like and subscribe buttons? Maybe leave us a comment on what you think of the show. We'd really appreciate it. Join us again next week for an all new episode. Bye!